Um, let's watch this more pro freak union uh, about uh, has an interesting take on the war. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Wait, is there a YouTube video of this? How America helped Russian oligarchs steal Don't billions. Minds in the wake of Putin's invasion of Ukraine. You've probably heard about the insane amounts of hidden wealth they have. And you might have heard that the American government is taking action. But if America is really going to rein in the power of Russian oligarchy, we need to reckon with the fact that we created the system that allows them to hide their stolen wealth. That's right. America let Russian billionaires exploit our financial system through lax rules and hidden loopholes, and they're not the only ones doing it. American and European billionaires stash their riches exactly the same way. We have an opportunity right now to shut down this shadowy world of offshore finance. It's not just a way to pressure Putin's Russia, it's also a way to make sure oligarchs from around the world have less control of our economy and politics. Here's how we can do it. What is an oligarch anyway? Well, an oligarchy is basically a small group of wealthy elites who control the politics and laws of a nation's government. The word is almost always used by Western media to refer to Russian oligarchy. These are a small set of ultra wealthy business magnates who have had tremendous power in Russia. Of course, we don't have that in the United States. Not us. Never us. Never that. Don't be crazy now. We would never do that. We would never have oligarchs. Don't be crazy now. Russia over the last few decades. After the fall of the Berlin Wall and the end of the Soviet Union, most of the Russian economy was transferred from government control to private ownership in a process referred to as shock therapy. When Russia entered the world of global capitalism in 1991, the men who became oligarchs were pleased to discover a shadow financial system, flush with dark money and shielded from the law. It's a complicated and secretive network of tax havens and shell companies. We've seen in recent leaks like the Panama Papers that this shadow system has enabled the global financial elite to shield trillions of dollars from taxation or law enforcement. But here's the thing, it was European and American bankers, lawyers and lobbyists that built this corrupt system in the first place. Russian oligarchs hide their wealth in the shadows and we were the ones what? who turned off the lights in the first place. They take advantage of American and European laws which allow corporate owners to set up companies with virtually no disclosure requirements. In fact, Slightly more than half of Russian billionaires' wealth you. is stored abroad. Oligarchs purchase high-rise apartments in Manhattan and London to launder their money. Billions of dollars of dirty money pouring into places like London and New York has contributed to making homes unaffordable for working people and turned housing, which should be a human right, into an accounting unit for Kremlin money launderers. That's why you may have noticed in the news that the mega yachts being seized in the last few weeks were located in places like Barcelona, the French Riviera and the Maldives. These yachts Remember those papers and all we could talk about is how much you make? Yeah, because Twitch people are fucking brain rotted, dude. No one gives a shit. Trying to fucking target, like, the mega wealthy who completely control the planet is, is, it'll make you feel powerless, okay? But Twitch streamer, Twitch streamer Rich, that's, that's a good one. Oh, yes, buying a $42 million apartment con contributes to homelessness. Wait, what? You think Russian oligarchs or just oligarchs in general do not contribute to homelessness? The fuck do you mean? Lamo, yeah, I'm sure Russian oligarchs are the reason housing isn't affordable. What the fuck? Yes, dude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not just like Russian ones. No, all oligarchs are the reason why housing isn't affordable. All capitalists, they buy housing as a commodity, as an investment vehicle. It's like, hey man, listen, I'll only criticize capitalism if we do it from a point of view of ethnic background or race or creed, okay? I'm not doing it for any other reason. How are oligarchs any different than a top 100 CEO? They're not, you fucking weirdo. That's the whole point. What do you mean? What? That's what I've... Did you hear me being sarcastic? I think I was being serious. What the fuck? That was my point. What is going on? What's happening right now in the chat, dude? Hello. All billionaires are oligarchs. America is also an oligarchy. What is going on? There's no difference functionally between a Russian oligarch and an American one, okay? People make it seem like uh, the, the Russian oligarch controls uh, large swaths of the Russian economy, whereas like the American one doesn't. No, the American one does too. What the fuck? Wealth. The oligarchs also use Swiss bank accounts to hide their money, up to $150 billion worth, according to an estimate from a leading Swiss paper produced this week. 
At the end of the 1990s, after Russian oligarchy had taken hold, a strong man emerged, Vladimir Putin. Putin came to power with the support of Russia's oligarchs. Putin yeah, but lack of housing seems like the main problem to me. Is it not enough housing to go around? First and foremost, even if you think, even if you're like a straight fucking yimby and you think it's the lack of housing, okay, who is controlling the supply of housing? You think it's the big bad government? Or do you think it's the big bad government working at the behest of other realtors and developers who want to maintain a certain price to make sure that it continues going up? God damn, dude. Fucking people that have talked them uh, Twitter descriptions stop sounding like fucking libertarians challenge. Impossible difficulty. Putin himself has amassed vast wealth and by some measures is the wealthiest man in the world. Putin has reportedly spent one billion to build himself a 123,785 square foot palace, which is nearly double the size of Buckingham Palace. Once in office, Putin crushed Russia's independent-minded oligarchs. Then, with the support of those that remained, he gradually moved Russia from a failing democracy with freedom of speech to a dictatorship governed with fear and violence. Once, Putin worked for the oligarchy, now the oligarchy works for Putin. Uh, by the way, this is also true. Anytime they cover like what Russia is doing or what Putin is doing in Russia, it's fucking hilarious that it is just like you can make a one-to-one -one comparison to the United States of America, straight up. So after decades of fueling Russian oligarchs' wealth, why are we suddenly going after them? Why now? Well, Western leaders believe that putting pressure on Russian oligarchs could force them to pressure Putin to withdraw from his invasion of Ukraine. But many analysts, myself included, believe that Russian oligarchs... Wait, hold up. The person who said, even if you build a skyscraper for every citizen, it won't be enough to give you prices so they can afford it. That's true. Um, that's literally not true. In most cities, vacant housing units outnumber homeless people by around three to one. Uh, I agree. Certainly. I, I understand. And, and agree with your point, yes. Also, vacant houses that people sit on because, again, it is considered an investment vehicle and it's cheaper to just sit on vacant homes and Airbnb it out rather than actually fucking uh, sell it, okay? Or or even rent it out, as a matter of fact. Because ultimately, you can just cash out on that investment years down the line because it's an asset that's constantly appreciating. Why is it constantly appreciating? through a series of financially interested parties getting together and ensuring that it constantly appreciates as a con uh, by doing things like limiting the supply of housing too, okay? Supply of affordable housing especially. Only allowing expensive new housing to be built, luxury condominiums, and uh, ensuring that hotels, for example, don't do like project room key uh, type things uh, to, to combat homelessness. All of it still comes back to the same concept, which is that housing should not be seen as a commodity, okay? Now, almost all work for Putin. If we want to end Putin's invasion of Ukraine, we need to get rid of the oil and gas payments he depends upon to fund his military machine. Still, the fact remains that defeating the Russian oligarchy is crucial for our national security because it will remove Russian billionaires' influence from our own politics in America and Europe. Putin and his oligarch allies. But there's no one the American oligarchs work for, right? Like how Russia's work for Putin. The American oligarchs just work for themselves. They work for capitalism uh, and, and the sanctity and maintenance and continuation of capitalism, a system that has rewarded them so greatly that their great, 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 great grandchildren no longer have to work, okay, if they don't want to. It's class solidarity demonstrated every single day in front of your eyes, except the only class solidarity that is acceptable is billionaires and millionaires and capital owners and even small business owners as well. A false sense of class solidarity with bourgeois can also be seen in even workers that have a 401k, okay? Let me rephrase, Russian oligarchs do not materially contribute to unaffordable housing. Inflation and policy set by HUD, FHA, and FHFA contribute to unaffordable housing. I say this is an employee of one of those organizations. I mean, you're, I think you're missing what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, it's the top of the fucking hour. And as an oligarch of the American variety, I'm going to serve you a 60-second ad. Here's the one-minute ad break now. Okay, so the American government does not work for the interests of the citizen. The American government is set up and continues to work for the interests of capital owners. 
And when the American government does something, it's not necessarily the fault of like this individual entity called the American government operating at their own on their own volition. That's just a theory. That's just a false notion that helps us sleep at night. Make us feel like we actually have a say in this process. When the American government does something, it is done with the express purpose of benefiting capital owners and their material interests, okay? They are the ones who built this government specifically for this purpose. That's it. Guys ...have been funding a network of right-wing parties and movements that incite racism, oppose democracy, and spread climate change denial. They leverage cultural power by sponsoring iconic American institutions like the Metropolitan Opera and Carnegie Hall to legitimize Putin's... Mark Fisher, the actual ruling class, propagates ideologies of individualism while tending to the act as a class. The dupe servants of the ruling class does the opposite, lip service to solidarity and collectivity while always acting as if the individualist categories imposed by power really hold. Regime. And they have teams of lobbyists and lawyers to influence our lawmakers. Removing their corrupting influence from our politics helps make decisions about Russia and oligarchs in our own best interests. And crucially, closing down loopholes in the shadow financial system could be used to expose corrupt elites, not just the Russian ones. So how do we do it? First off, we can create a global wealth registry to track oligarchs' assets <laughs> across the world. This would yeah, right. Imagine. I'm willing to bet that, you know, those who hold the levers of power would not necessarily be very comfortable with such a concept. You know, having all of their assets in some kind of registry. Would include an automatic exchange of financial information on extremely wealthy individuals. Countries like the US, UK and the Euro... It's really funny because, like, there's well-intentioned social democrats, okay, that, that, you know, propose these kind of solutions, but don't actually want to do what it takes to build an enforcement mechanism and can't even fucking comprehend how that would work. It's just not going to happen. And I, I think this is, this is some pickety. The enforcement mechanism will be expensive? No. No, oh, no, 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 no. You're missing the point. I'm not even talking about the enforcement mechanism. I'm talking about even creating or completely uprooting the system in an effort to have some kind of enforcement. You're missing the forest for the trees here. What I'm simply stating is, without any kind of worker power, labor militancy that accompanies any sort of movement like this, all you're going to have is ideas like the ones put forward by well-intentioned social democrats like Piketty about a wealth registry and a potential wealth tax at the global level when these individual countries operate specifically at the behest of said oligarchs. They work, they work in a way where the, the governments work in favor of those very same people that we're supposed to be doing a, a wealth registry on. It's never going to happen. The European Union could work together to make sure the wealthy pay their fair share. Second, we can close financial loopholes which are frequently used by oligarchs to hide their wealth. Instead of allowing the ultra-rich to use shell companies and opaque ownership structures, we could require beneficial ownership requirements for all forms of assets and ones that really work. Essentially, that would require all companies, trusts and foundations to publicly disclose who benefits from them. Finally, we can increase funding and support for enforcing the laws we already have on the books. Bobbies. The US can put anti-corruption and money laundering measures at the top of the international agenda. And we can provide many more resources to the domestic and international regulatory agencies whose job it is to track oligarchs' wealth and enforce when they break the law. Has Today, it. Russia's billionaires control roughly 30% of the nation's wealth. For comparison, German and American billionaires control about 15% of the wealth in their respective countries. Research suggests Russian oligarchs have about as much wealth stashed in offshore foreign accounts as the entire Russian population has in Russia itself. Defeating the Kremlin's oligarchy would be a huge turning point for both national security and financial transparency.
So if our leaders truly are serious about tackling Putin's oligarchy, then we have to start looking at our own role in creating these loopholes and close them down once and for all. China may have shit MREs, but I don't see Jack Ma talking about his insane 996 shit anymore. The China model of handling oligarchs is better. I don't think China enforced, you know, I don't think China kidnapped Jack Ma in, in the lightest terms I can uh, use to, to, because he was talking about six, uh, the, his 996 plan program, whatever. <laughs> <laughs>